Join us as we uncover true Bible history. From the creation of the heavens and the earth, to the first man and woman, from the forbidden tree of knowledge, to ancient biblical manuscripts and translations. Discover information about early settlers in the ancient lands of Mesopotamia, Egypt, ancient Israel, and Rome. All this and more in our new series, Uncovering True Biblical History. The New Testament was made up to control the masses. This is the conspiracy that most people refer to as the Piso family or Flavian family conspiracy. Now, let's talk about the Flavian dynasty, okay? The Flavian dynasty ruled the Roman Empire between 69 AD and 96 AD, compassing the reigns of Vespasian from 69 AD to 79 AD, and his two sons, Titus, 79 AD to 81 AD, and Domitian, 81 AD to 96 AD. The Flavian dynasty witnessed the siege and destruction of Jerusalem by Titus in 70 AD, following the failed Jewish rebellion of 66 AD. Conspiracy theories dealing with the Flavian dynasty only one conspiracy is known specifically. In 78 AD or 79 AD, there was an attempt to incite a Praetorian guard to mutiny against Vespasian. But the conspiracy was thwarted by Titus. Now, according to the historian John Cook, however, the alleged conspiracy was in fact a calculated plot by the Flavian faction to remove members of the opposition tied to Lucianus. If you do your research, that's the only conspiracy. Now, Domitian appears to have met with several conspiracies during his reign one of which led to his eventual assassination in 96 AD. None of these conspiracies had anything to do with the Messiah and the New Testament. Now, this Piso Flavian family conspiracy, let me first say this that all conspiracy theories have a beginning and the Kabbalah Jews are the origin of this theory. Note that most articles, books, or websites that present this theory are only within the last few years. As a matter of fact, the earliest book found on the subject was written by Abelard Ruchlin in 1979. Abelard Ruchlin is an American essayist, an author who wrote the book titled The True Authorship of the New Testament. The book makes accusations and allegations, but offers no proof behind the theory. The book offers no footprint in tracking the allegations down. No historical references no ancient historical sources for his theory. In fact, Abelard Ruchlin grew up a practicing Jew. 
a Judaeus that does not believe in the New Testament. He was a part of an inner circle of members of a group which believed in this conspiracy theory. He spoke Hebrew, Aramaic, and Yiddish. As many of the Jews from his generation, he knew some German as well. However, he also knew Latin and Greek and was no doubt a Kabbalah Jew. Kabbalah, sometimes translated as mysticism or occult knowledge, is a part of Jewish tradition that deals with the essence of God. Kabbalistic thought often is considered Jewish mysticism. Practical Kabbalah in historical Judaism is a branch of the Jewish mystical tradition that concerns the use of magic. The practice of occult knowledge that deals with witchcraft and sorcery. Now, these are the people that are behind this conspiracy theory that teaches that the New Testament was made up to control the masses. This is a belief that the Jews have had about the New Testament for centuries but they have no real proof to back up this theory. Another source of these conspiracy theories is an American biblical scholar named Joseph Atwill. In London on the 19th of October, 2013, he presented a controversial new discovery that the New Testament was written by the first century Roman aristocrats and that they fabricated the entire story of the Messiah, which some refer to as Jesus Christ. Mr. Atwill claims to have discovered the secret hidden code in the text. Amazing! A self-proclaimed biblical scholar with no formal training in the material has used his magic decoder ring and stumbled upon a code. The Roman Piso theory is a counterfeit historical theory of the origins of the New Testament. It states that a conspiracy of well-educated Romans, the Piso family, or the Flavians, wrote the New Testament, particularly the Gospels, as a social control mechanism. Here are the other claims. Arius Capernius Piso is none other than Flavius Josephus himself. Number two, JC stands for Jesus Christ and Julius Caesar. Number three, the Flavian family created the Messiah referred to as Jesus Christ. Number four, the Flavian family created the New Testament. If you do a research on the name Arius Capronius Piso, it turns up nothing. It's only in the Jewish Talmud and on websites that promote or support this conspiracy theory. They claim that the initials JC stand for Jesus Christ and Julius Caesar. Also, that the name given to Jerusalem by Arius Piso in 66 CE was Jupiter Capilanium, another JC. First, keep in mind that the true name of the Messiah was Yahushua HaMashiach, not Jesus Christ. Therefore, no JC. And Josephus' real name was Joseph ben Metheyahu. And he makes no mention of such an Arius Piso. No mention of him at all. So the JC theory doesn't make sense because there was no letter J. 
Now, Flavius Josephus, whose name was actually Joseph Ben Metheyahu, was not a part of the Flavian family. Flavius Josephus actually fought against the Emperor Titus Flavius Vespasianus in the First Jewish-Roman War. He was captured and made a slave to the Emperor Vespasianus. In 69 AD, Vespasianus granted Josephus his freedom, at which time Josephus assumed the Emperor's family name of Flavius. Flavius Josephus fully defected to the Roman side and was granted Roman citizenship. He became an advisor and friend of Vespasian's son Titus, serving as his translator when Titus led the siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. The claim that Josephus and the Flavian family created the Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, to control the masses is completely bogus. Many Israelites at that time did not believe in Yahushua being the Messiah. The Roman Empire had been controlling Israel for more than 60 years before the Messiah was even born. So why then did he need to control the people by creating the Messiah of the Jews, as they would put it? The Jews or the Israelites were anti-Messiah at that time. They would have and did reject the Messiah. And the Roman Empire did not need to create the Messiah. As a matter of fact, it was the Messiah that delivered the final blow to the Roman Empire as prophesied in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 34. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them in pieces. The stone smote the fourth kingdom that was mingled with the indigenous. That's wrong. As a matter of fact, the Roman leaders could not understand why the Jews or the Israelites wanted to even crucify Yahushua. Luke chapter 23 verse 22 and he said unto them the third time why what evil have he done I have found no cause of death in him I will therefore chasten him and let him go so the Roman Emperor wanted to let the Messiah go now the facts are that the Roman Empire would have been better off if there was no Messiah. So then why would they create a Jewish Messiah to destroy their own kingdom? Exactly. This is why those that believe this doctrine did not do their own research. Most conspiracy theories dealing with the Flavian family or the Piso family had nothing to do with Christianity or the early church. Nothing to do with the Messiah or the New Testament at all. This is something that was completely made up. No historical facts, just religious Jews, the synagogue of Satan, that are against the Messiah in the New Testament that put forth these conspiracy theories. Now, the Kabbalah Jews are the creators of this conspiracy theories against the New Testament. The same people the scripture speaks of them as liars. Revelations chapter 2 verse 9. I know the blasphemy of them that say that they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Revelations chapter 3 verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say that they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet to know that I have loved thee. My question to you is, do you really want to believe anything from those that the Most High referred to as liars? It figures that they would believe that the New Testament was made up 
since it referred to them as liars belonging to the synagogue of Satan. Of course they would get angry and create all type of conspiracies against the New Testament. Of course they would, because the New Testament called them a liar. <laughs> it said they were of the synagogue of Satan. Listen to this statement written by Adlai Ruchlin. We Jews and church leaders have known since the beginning of Christianity that it was synthesized by the Roman Peso family for the purpose of maintaining control over the masses and to placate slaves. And this is why we Jews are the chosen people and why we have endured so much for so many years. We are witnesses to the lie. Wow. They called themselves Jews, the chosen people. You know they're not the true Jews or Hebrews of the Bible, the true chosen Israelites of the Bible. We know that they are not. But listen, he, called, he said, we are witness to the lie. Why would they tell such a lie and put it out there as history? It is obvious to protect their belief in the Old Testament and to throw shade at the New Testament for calling them liars. Mm -hmm. The facts. One, the Jews never believed in the Messiah because they knew he was a black man. Number two, they never accepted the New Testament. Number three, they were a part of the transatlantic slave trade. Number four, they owned the ships that shipped the slaves. Number five, many of them actually owned slaves. Number six, Many of them are Kabbalah Jews that practice witchcraft and sorcery. Many are saying that the Piso family is the true origin of the Messiah. But there are no real facts to back up this claim and is based on presumptions of an embedded code in the New Testament. Basically, there is no evidence outside the theory that Arius Capronius Piso actually existed. And the only people that push conspiracy is unsuspecting modern scholars as conspiracy theorists. One such conspiracy theorist is David Icke, a former footballer and sports broadcaster. In 1990, while spokesman for the Green Party, he visited a psychic who he said told him he had been placed on earth for the purpose and would begin receive messages from the spirit world. Mm -hmm. The events led him to announce the following year that he was a son of the Godhead and that the world would soon be devastated by tidal waves and earthquakes, a prediction he repeated on BBC's primetime show, Wugan. He later came up with a genealogy that connected the Piso family to the secret societies. Where did he get it from? A psychic. So let's review the proof of this conspiracy. Psychic readings, hidden codes, Jewish mysticism, and witchcraft. Most of the teachings about the Piso Flavian family are on conspiracy theorist websites. There was a Gaius Caprunius Piso. But Arius Capronius Piso is very questionable since all research of this name points to the Jewish Talmud or blogs or YouTube videos and websites. They have flooded the internet with this false information with no real historical proof or facts. Flavius Josephus 
was not Arius Capronius Piso. Because the synagogue of Satan knew that they made up a fictional character and they had to attach him to a real person. They actually admit that Arius Caponius Piso was in fact not a real person. There is not, nor has there ever been an Arius Caponius Piso. This is witchcraft at its best. They know that most people will not dig deep into this name and websites presenting the false information. Flavius Josephus published a history of the Jews in 20 books around 93 CE. The Testimonium Flavinium, meaning the testimony of Flavius Josephus, is a passage found in the book 18 chapter 3 verse 3 of the antiquities which describes the condemnation and crucifixion of the messiah at the hands of the roman authorities since the gospel of mark were written around 66 to 70 a.d which is older than the writings of flavius josephus but there is actually a historian by the name of Thalos that wrote about the Messiah in 55 AD, which Josephus was only a child at this time. This alone proves that Josephus did not create the Messiah or the New Testament. Gaius Capronius Piso was a first century Roman senator who gave his name to the actual Pisonian conspiracy, which was a plot to absurd Nero. This had nothing to do with religious works or the origin of the New Testament. Many people are very emotional about what they believe. Therefore, through their emotions, they ascribe meanings to things that don't exist. Emotions fool their perception to what is real. With the Messiah, you have all types of documentations, manuscripts that support that he and the New Testament existed. Seven ancient manuscripts that validate the Bible's New Testament. 1. John Ryland's MS AD 130. This papyrus fragment, also known as P52, is encased within a climate-controlled cabinet located inside the John Ryland's Library of Manchester, England. The fragment contains words from the account of the Messiah's trial before Pilate. This portion of the Gospel of John is so old that it helps to confirm the traditional date of the composition of the Gospel to be about the end of the first century. 2. The Diatessaron, AD 170. The Diatessaron, which means Harmony of Four was created by Tatian, an early writer in the second century. It combines the four canonical Gospels into a single harmonious narrative. 3. Chester B. D. Papyrus A.D. 200, also known as P45, P46, and P47. P45 contains part of a codex of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. P46 contains letters written by Paul. Romans, Hebrews, 1 and 2 Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, Colossians, and Thessalonians. P47 contains the oldest known text of the book of Revelation. 4. Codex Alexandrinus, Ad 400. This early 5th century Greek manuscript contains almost the entire Bible. 5. Codex Bezicantabrigiensis, AD 450. The Codex Bezi dates from the 5th century. It uniquely contains the Gospels and Acts, in both Greek and Latin pages, which face each other. The only book that is complete is the Gospel of Luke. 6. Codex Vaticanus, AD 325-350. This manuscript contains nearly all of the Bible. 7. Codex Sinaiticus, AD 350. The manuscript contains almost all of the 4th century, New Testament and over half of the Old Testament. For the Gospel texts, its reliability is considered second only to the Codex Vaticanus. 
Brax, its reliability is equal to the Codex Vaticanus, and for the Epistles, its reliability is ranked first. My question to those that are pushing these conspiracy theories about the Messiah and the New Testament, where are the manuscripts or ancient writings to prove this theory? We need more than just a people that claim to be the true Hebrew people of the Bible, but in fact are not, but false Ashkenazi Khazar Jews. Wow, unless those that believe in a piece of family conspiracy theory can present actual documentation in the form of ancient writings, manuscripts that predate those of the New Testament, this is a closed case. You got to understand that if you do not do your own research, but instead listen to those videos and teachings without doing your own due diligence, you are lining yourself up to receive the strong delusion the scriptures spoke about, and thus being judged by the Most High. Even some of the manuscripts mentioned are also used to validate the Old Testament manuscripts which are dated before the time of the Messiah. Keep in mind that of the 5,800 New Testament manuscripts, there are more than 2.6 million pages that equates to one mile of ancient New Testament manuscripts and 2.5 miles for the entire Bible. So, if you believe the Piso Flavian family conspiracy theory, you might as well believe that the Father's name is Jehovah and join the Kabbalah Jews because this is their doctrine. Shalom. Join us as we uncover true Bible history from the creation of the heavens and the earth to the first man and woman, from the forbidden tree of knowledge to ancient biblical manuscripts and translations. Discover information about early settlers in the ancient lands of Mesopotamia, Egypt, ancient Israel, and Rome. Hidden truths about the true name of God and about the early church age, from the time of the Messiah and the Last Supper to the time of Constantine we will discover hidden information. We will uncover mistranslations and misquotes of the Bible to help you gain a better understanding of Scripture. Hellenistic Judaism and Greek influence of the New Testament will be revealed. In this series, we will unlock the truth about the people of the Bible, false gods of antiquity, their symbols, and their influence on Christianity. All this and more in our new series, Uncovering True Biblical History.